2022 has been what can only be described as an interesting year for us traders. There have been opportunities, but also there have been all sorts of markets which have gone in totally the wrong direction for our positioning. And we're talking now to one IG client and independent trader, Michael Taylor, who joins us now with some more about what we're doing in terms of where we're positioning ourselves in the market. First of all, welcome back, because it's been a long time since we, it has, yeah. since we Lot, spoke. It has, yeah. Lots uh, has happened. Pre-COVID. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I want to talk to you a bit, bit about COVID, actually, and talk a little bit about, as a trader, how you positioned yourself. We, we, it came out of nowhere. So yeah. it was one of the, would you describe it as a black swan event? Yeah, definitely. Um, it was quite scary. Uh, for me, I didn't really do as well as I could have done. Um, well, hindsight's because, a great thing. Well, it is, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you should see my hindsight portfolio. It's up 10,000% this year, but uh, not my real one, sadly. Yeah. But yeah, at the time, I remember, I'm pretty sure I remember being at a lunch in December. That would have been 2019. 2019 yeah. And people were talking about COVID in China and no, nobody really cared. Yeah. Um, and I can remember a friend told me he met a, a hedge fund guy who was sweating bullets because he'd gone, you know, all in short in December, right? Um, and was already massively offside on the trade then. Uh, don't know if, if he ever held it through to to February, right? Uh, because obviously January the market just rallied, yeah. um, and I remember even when it was sweeping through Italy, and you know we had these videos on Twitter of people saying this is going to yeah. come. You know, people were still flying in airplanes and everything. Mm -hmm. Um, and the markets were just going, you know, higher. So I just assumed the market's efficient. Um, you know, all these people much smarter than me, got much bigger machinery than me to compute things, obviously know better. Mm. Therefore, if I go short, it's probably a losing trade. So, you know, I actually talked myself out of a trade because if it was nothing, the market was expecting it to be nothing, mm. so I wouldn't really have lost that much. But obviously, if I'd have been right, and you know the markets did tank, yeah. then I could have um, done quite well. Mm. Um, but as as the market did tank, you start to think, well, it might actually bounce. So yeah, I don't really want to short it here because it might bounce, and then I'll you know lose again. Yeah. Um, but I did eventually start shorting things because some stocks just had no bid. Yeah, and you would yeah, short them yeah. and they would fall and yeah. no one was bidding for anything you know there'd be like loads of things on the offer and the bid would be like 20 30p down on like mm. a 200p stock you know mm. you, you could drive a truck yeah. through the spread mm. um, but of course at that time we were all locked down and of course us traders of course were much more in front of our screens i suppose to a point yeah. So we were reading things on a minute by minute basis. And I think that always gives a bit of a false impression. Anyway, I don't know what your mm. thoughts are. I mean, you're at it far more than I am because you, 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 you make your living out of it. But then came this bottom, very quick snap bottom. It looked like one of these sort of, um, what do the technical traders call it? It's sort of exhaustion trade, yeah. isn't it? It's right at the very bottom. And then all of a sudden, it snapped back. I mean, that must have caught you. It did, yes. Yeah, so I the remember being way. short. 20, 30 stocks, um, you know, so I'd started shorting way too late, but I'd been quite aggressive in shorting them down. Mm. Um, and then the lockdown was announced and yeah. that, that was the bottom. Mm. Um, I ended up covering things, but I didn't go long because I thought, you know, it's <laughs> lockdown, obviously, how's any, yeah. anyone gonna make any money at all? Yeah. Um, and then, of course, things, came all the money coming in from central banks and governments and so exactly to try the, and support the markets. The helicopter money. That's right. Um, so I did get along eventually, but quite late. But you know, as we saw with 2021 and 2020, it was just yeah. a one-way street. From so, what did you what did you from learn from this? I mean, is there is there a, a, um, a, something to take away from this? Let's hope it never happens again. Because, Let's hope not. Yeah. Um, you know, we don't really want to go through all that again. Um, was there a, a message? Do you think that? For, for young traders coming into the market now, mm. is there something you would say, this happened, this is how we dealt with it, this is a lesson that was learned? Um, I think one thing I would say is that markets are not efficient, and this is something I've believed ever since I've been a trader, especially in small caps, they're not efficient right. because you don't have, you know, for example, with Vodafone, you might have teams of suits from Barclays, yep. uh, Jefferies, looking at every little cash flow and that stock will be pretty efficiently priced. Mm. But with small caps, you know, it'll be people like me, 
um, back bedroom punters, you don't really get institutions or smart money in things sub hundred. I, I mean, there are, yeah. but it's it's never really efficiently priced, and, and that can be the opportunity. Um, so, for example, one trade that I will often see is post earnings announcement drift. Mm -hmm. You know, stock announces good news. If the market was efficient, it would uncross and then not move for yeah. the rest of the day. But of course, it uncrosses and then carries on going. Oh, not always, because nothing's ever guaranteed. Mm -hmm. um, but because the market's not efficient, we get things like that happen. You know, if the market was efficient, it wouldn't be a thing. So you're taking um, advantage of that opportunity. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. So it, if uh, when I was talking about going short, um, you know, even at the the highest level of FTSE 100 and everything, sometimes things just aren't priced efficiently. Mm. Uh, that, that was a big wake-up call for me. Um, and I'm not a smart guy, I'm not a macro guy, but sometimes you can spot good risk to reward trades. Um, and you might even want to talk yourself out with them, but maybe mm. just put it on. Mm. Um, and you might, you might be wrong, you might be right, but you'll probably learn something doing it. The other thing is, I'm talking to you about your strategy. I mean, you give the impression you're just a standalone guy doing your own thing, but that's not the case, is it? You have a group of friends, don't you, that you concur with. Is that right? You drill down in terms of some um, of the ports Yeah, so I've got a, a network of people yeah. that will bounce ideas off and things like that. So you're not, you're not really fully alone unless you want to be. Mm. Um, I mean, all of my friends tend to trade differently from how I trade, but sometimes they might see something that they like and, you know, they'll pass it my way, I'll do the same. Um, I mean, some of my best trades have actually come from, from other people telling me about them, so yeah. you, nev you never really know. It, I think it's good to, to talk to people. Mm. Don't blindly follow people on Twitter or social media. <laughs> cause, good old know, social media. I mean, e even yeah. me, I get plenty of things wrong. Um, so you shouldn't ever follow anyone blindly, but look at what they post, you know, does, yeah. does the trade make sense? Have they missed out any of the risks? Mm. Um, one thing that you do see is, you know, if, if I'm long something, I don't mind people poking holes at it because I want to know the real risks. Mm. But some people, they'll sort of put their head in the sand and they won't want to hear any downside and that, that really is dangerous because mm. they, they've got one view and they're not looking at any of the potential risks, mm. um, which is sad, but it's something that new traders do quite yeah. a lot. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's wind the clock forward and take a look in some more detail about what happened last year. As I said at the top, it was a bit of a difficult year for some people. It's easy to get the wrong side of a trade. Mm -hmm. um, how, how did you fare? What was the strategy you followed that gave you the opportunity to continue to be in the market? Um, so 2022, um, you know, I think everyone was max long in December 2021 mm -hmm. so you know the first couple of months were pretty easy um, I did make some dumb mistakes you know I am human um, I was too big in some stocks that were just too difficult to sell so I took big markdowns on those um, didn't short aggressively as I should have um, so there were some stocks which I felt were, were quite obvious would take some pain uh, so for example Jim Group because you know, if people are getting their, their pockets squeezed, mm -hmm. they're gonna go through everything and they're gonna look where they can save money. Mm -hmm. And when I actually looked through the annual report, there was a, it was a large amount of people were not even going once a week. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, that's a very easy money saver for a lot mm -hmm. of people. Mm -hmm. um, and just the, the sentiment, but I, I didn't actually make any money right. on that stock, even though I actually got the trade right. Right. I think I got stopped out of it, never yeah, put it back on, yeah. and then you know you look a few months later and it's yeah. dumped 50%. Well, um, I want to say one thing, and we, we might talk about stocks in this interview, but I know that you're not recommending any of these. I'm, no, I'm certainly not recommending I don't, I don't want to don't drill don't down into me. your... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want to drill down into your, 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 um, your, your positions, particularly on individual stocks. Just remind us, do you, are you a day trader? Do you stop out at the end, do, do you finish your trade at the end of every day, or do you hold over for periods, that mm. maybe over a weekend or whatever? What, what's your strategy in that regard? So I, so I do both, so I will intraday trade. Um, so for example, this morning, EasyJet had good news. Yep. Um, and, and even then that post earnings announcement drift happened today, so it gapped up and it, it did. did move higher. But sometimes the better trade is to go for the read across so if we imagine EasyJet has good news, mm -hmm. it's not so difficult to imagine Jet2, Wizz Air, mm -hmm. 
might have new, uh, you know, an uplift as well because people are making the assumption they're doing well as well. Mm. And that actually happened, Jet2 and Wizz Air. They didn't even gap up and they, they rallied. Um, unfortunately, I can't neither because I was busy elsewhere. Right. Um, but I do intraday trade and some trades I hold for weeks, months, even years. Uh, very rare I'll hold them for years. Mm. Um, but and yeah, you, and, and, and you specialise in small caps, don't you? Do, you? do you veer into other markets? I know we're talking to some clients that just do FX or they just do commodities. Are you just small caps or do you... Um, UK stocks, so intraday, right. you know, I will trade the larger stuff because you can't intraday mm -hmm. trade small stuff because you've got a 10% spread. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you buy in, you've sort of committed yourself, whereas EasyJet, you know, you, you can get out pretty quickly mm. and easily. Um, but yeah, U UK stocks generally, FX I think is very difficult to make money from if, if people are successful doing that. I have a lot of respect for them because mm. that is tough. Uh, commodities, I tend to leave that alone. Um, what I will do is if a commodity is performing really well, mm -hmm. can I find a stock to play that trade? And the correlation is never going to be perfect, right? But if if you know gold is going up and you have a view that it will continue to go up. You want to find yeah, uh, an undervalued yeah. stock that will likely benefit from that tailwind. Mm. Um, so it, it's not commodity trading, but I might take a view mm. on a commodity and play it through mm. a stock. Mm. So here we are now in 2023, and almost at the end of January, can you believe yeah, it? Yeah, it's going to um, be Christmas again. So. <laughs> <laughs> Don't start that one. <laughs> um, listen, um, 2023, anything sort of pearls of wisdom you think it's worth mentioning to other IG clients because we, we're in an environment at the moment where we've got central banks, they've clearly still got their foot on the pedal. We heard today some news coming through from Australia, for example, mm -hmm. uh, where trimmed mean CPI coming in stronger than expected. We're now expecting the RBA to be more aggressive. We still don't know for a fact the Fed's slowing down. The Fed has said they're going to continue to raise interest rates. We know the ECB still gets foot in the pedal. We've got no indication that inflation is really stopping here in the UK. So I imagine that the central bank, does that concern you? I mean, what, how do you play the inflation or the central bank activity? Or is it just a question of doing the long short dance with different stocks? Yeah, so, so for me, um, you know, macro is sort of above my pay grade. I don't look at the granular stuff, I tend to, look at the, the view and the risk to reward in that. So, you know, coming back to 2022, we had a euphoric bull market mm. and things were very clearly going to go wrong, which was why I started putting on more shorts and getting short and playing it that way. Um, if, I mean, I go through a couple of hundred charts a weekend with filters and quite a lot of them have seemed to have bottomed in October, November. So, I don't know for sure, and you know nobody ever does because they don't have crystal balls, but I get the feeling that the market maybe has bottomed and we're sort of starting to, to move into a new bull market. Hard to say, but what I've found is the easy money going short has gone, you know, valuations have shrank, you, right. you're not really finding garbage trading at 50 times earnings mm -hmm. anymore, whereas people were quite happy to, to bid all of those up, you know, that, that is now gone. So it's quite difficult now to make money going short um, unless you find like a really good opportunity. Whereas before, shorting was quite easy. Yeah. It's, it's not anymore. I think the, you know, really, I want to be looking to, to go long. That's an interesting point. I, I was I was going to ask you the question whether or not you think we're going to visit the COVID lows. Clearly not. Then I mean, you, I know you don't trade indices. Mm. You trade individual stocks, but. Uh, some people still feel there's, there's, we've got to get a new bottom in before we start to make an aggressive upside. But you don't think that's the case? Who knows? Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. I just look yeah. at charts and yeah. you know, what I'm seeing is that things are quite happily going up. Um, so I will just play, play mm. the charts and if we hit new lows, I guess they'll, you know, stocks will print new lows and yeah. that'll be the, the sort of key to close positions and look to go short, but um, there, there are pockets of value appearing. Um, so who really knows? It's, it's sort of hard. And, it, and if you get wedded to that view that we must see lows, then it's sort of hard. You get those blinkers on, you don't want to accept yeah. 
new information. Um, you know, I, I can change my opinion tomorrow if stocks start to fall. I'll think, okay, well, I was wrong. Yeah. Um, maybe I need to close all the positions. That, that was the point, actually. I was going to mention at the end of the interview to say that it could all change tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, exactly. That's, that's the yeah, thing I mean, this, 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 what I'm saying now could be out of date tomorrow, yeah. yeah. Um, which is why you've got to constantly look at new information and update your prior assumptions. Yeah. Do you, do you have any time off? I mean, you, oh, you must be constantly wedded to your phone on the app yeah. to try and make sure you're <laughs> the right side of the trade. I mean, we all have holidays when you have mm. downtime. Are you still at it? Uh, quite a lot of the time, <laughs> yeah. Uh, my wife really doesn't like it. Um, with the intraday stuff, um, you know, I won't trade intraday as much on holiday, you know, right. unless I think there's a really good trade. But I will get up to read the RNSs. Yeah. Uh, so whenever in the US, you know, my alarm will go off at like one in the morning. I go down to the hotel lobby. It's really good for marriage life, um, married life, isn't it? Yeah, not not so good, but. Um, yeah. You know, if if I have a large holding and there's a profit course, warning, yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I need you to get need out. To, yeah, I don't yeah. want to wake up and find that, you know, the stock's 50% down and I could have been selling at 20, 30, 40. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's it's really, I can't afford to not do it, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but, you know, full-time trader, there's, there's advantages, there's disadvantages. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the advantages is I can sit here talking to you and, Hopefully, I'm not losing too much money. <laughs> I bet you're um, on your phone as soon as I <laughs> I will be checking it, yeah. <laughs> Michael, look, we've got to leave it there, but thanks indeed for joining us. It's a pleasure. Thank you, uh, Jeremy. For you thanks to walk us through the life of a trader here at IG. That's Michael Taylor. He's an IG client and uh, someone that's very active in the market, especially small caps.